everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm Davide, Account Manager in Shining 3D, and today I'm going to show you how to scan and make reverse engineering of these two parts. The first one is a back derailleur support. You can easily find it on your bike. The most interesting thing is that this is bike specific, which means that if you break it, you can just pick another one. You need to respect size and shape. That's why it's very interesting for our application. The other part is an element of a car suspension system. In particular, it belongs to a vintage car, which means now it's out of production. So a digital model of it would be great for spare parts. So now let's introduce my co-star, Einscan Pro HD. Einscan Pro HD is a LED light scanner and this is one of our top seller scanner. Why? Because of its amazing accuracy and the opportunity to use in two different modes. Fixed mode on a tripod, for example, or in a handle mode. And now I'm going to show you both. So let's start with the scanning part. As you can see, we have mounted our scanner on a tripod and we have prepared also the automatic tour table. So everything is ready, but before to start, just a little trick. As you can see, the surface is a little bit of glossy, it's shiny. This can create some issue to the scanner, especially LED light scanner. So in this case, we can use scanning spray. Just to avoid to make a mess, just use a paper sheet and let's start to spray. As you can see, we put on the turner table as a, st a sticky part. Let's put this on. We are ready to start. Fix scan. We need to open a new project group. Let's put a name on it. In this case, project group one is okay. Non-texture scan, in this case, texture doesn't matter. Let's check if everything's okay. Okay, and then press start. Okay. The scanning part is complete. Now there is some noise and we need to clean. Okay, now everything is definitely better. Okay, now as you can see, some parts are missing, so we need to scan again. Just change the position of the object. And start again. Okay. Again, there is some noise, but we can clean it. Okay, definitely better. As you can see, some parts are still missing, so let's complete with the last position and scan again. Okay, now the path is the same. Okay, it's okay. Okay, now all part is complete. Let's optimize everything. Okay, okay. We are ready to create a mesh. In this case, we choose a semi watertight. Here we are. This is our object. Let's confirm. And now we can just switch to the reverse engineering part. We need to export the file in Quick Surface. Here we are. The first things to do is align the object in space. To do this, we should define primitives such as planes, cylinders, spheres, lines and points to create a comfortable reference system. In this case, we choose to build a plane passing through the lower surface of the object and a cylinder passing through the untraded hole. The plane was identified as the XY plane, the cylinder's axis was identified as the Z axis and the intersection point between the plane and the cylinder's axis was identified 
as the origin of the reference system. Then, we can start to create 2D sketches. 2D sketches are drawings that return the profile of the object sectioned by an imaginary cutting plane, which can be positioned freely. These sketches can be extruded or revolved according to your needs, and they will be fundamental in the creation of the final object. Considering this example, we proceed to draw the general outline of the solid. The software has several tools, some completely manual and other partially automatic, for creating the drawing. After completing the general profile, we can proceed with the extrusion. We can see there are some unnecessary volumes that have to be removed. A new plane passing through the upper surface of the object is defined. This plane and the plane line on the lower surface will help you delete the unwanted volumes. This operation is performed by using trim function and the elimination of the unwanted volumes is achieved by selecting them. The object is still missing a hole. This is made up of two coaxial cylinders, a pass-through cylinder and a non-pass-through cylinder. The solid structure of the hole is constructed by rotating the two-dimensional profile of the two cylinders by revolution. The resulting solid is then used in a trim operation to create the hole. The object has not the same thickness everywhere, it consists of two layers. It's necessary to remove additionally unwanted volumes. To do this, we draw the profile of a cutting surface. Define the plane touching the intermediate layer and repeat the trim operation. The hole at the top has chamfer on both sides. The corresponding to the sketches profile is created. The revolution operation draws the solid and the final trim impresses the corresponding chamfer into the workpiece. To create the object, it's necessary to thread the hole at the top. Threading needs two elements, the profile and the thread path. The third profile is defined by a revolution sketch. The third path is defined by the helix function. This function requires certain input parameters, such as the thread axis, screw pitch, start and end points of the thread. After defining profile and path, the sweep function combines this information and creates the final thread. Then, the thread needs to be combined with the workpiece in order to create a single solid body. To check if and how far the reconstructed object deviates from the scan object, you have to use the compare function, defining the tolerance range you prefer. The color map helps you to understand the deviation between the newly constructed CAD and the scan data. So now you saw how fixed mode works, now let's pass to handle mode. For handle mode, we want to scan this part. As you can see, its surface is very, very dark and presents also some reflective part. So scanning spray would be great and helpful also for this case. Let's pass to spray. Now let's switch on the computer. We choose the end.hd scan. We open a new project, create a name. Feature alignment, resolution is OK. Confirm. The first thing is just to see a preview to adjust the distance and the brightness. Okay, this can I see something. As you can see, auto cutting plane function is on. So this function allows you to delete what's under a certain plane which in this case is represented by the turntable. So now we can scan. Be careful to the color map on the screen. The data that are in green are a good quality data, and the other one, which is that are in red, are bad data. So you need to scan again those parts.
Okay, let's see what's going on. Okay. I want to show you a super cool feature that our new software has, the rewind function. So this feature allows you to come back and delete your action. So as you can see, you scan less and you need to scan again. So let's continue. Okay, let's generate the point cloud for this part. Okay, we are quite satisfied. So now let's switch to the other part, to the bottom surface. To scan the bottom part, we need to create a new project. So. Let's create a new project here. So confirm. Okay, now let's scan. Okay. Okay, let's generate the point cloud. Okay. okay, now we need to align the bottom part to the top one. So, project alignment, project one and project two. We choose manual feature alignment. So, we need to select at least three points to create the alignment. Okay, apply the alignment. Okay. The alignment result seems quite good. So it's complete. And now let's mesh the model. Okay, we choose semi water type model, apply. mesh is done and we can confirm and export in quick surface. After importing the mesh into quick surface we can proceed by duplicating the mesh. The first one represents the original piece. The second one is the piece on which we will operate. Now let's get a look at the object. As you can see the suspension is not a single piece, but it consists of several elements, a main structure and some extra elements connected to it. These extra elements are two cylindrical objects on either side of each suspension arm and a small plate joined to the main body by two bolts. For this tutorial, we will make reverse engineering just on the main structure. In this demonstration, we do not consider the other elements, so they can be eliminated. Extra parts are removed by using edit scan function. This function allows you to select areas or portion of the mesh on which editing operation can be performed. In our tutorial, we are going to remove the areas of the elements that we do not consider and rebuild the empty areas created because of these removals. Now we can appreciate the actual object on which we will make reverse engineering. Before proceeding with the reverse engineering operation, we are going to construct some solid elements, in our case cylinders, which will be useful later. These cylinders define the bolt holes, the center hole and the holes into which the cylindrical elements on either side of each arm are inserted. Now we are ready to create the reverse engineering model. The geometric complexity of the part makes proceeding by Boolean operation quite difficult. 
In such cases, the freeform feature is the right choice. This feature allows to create solids starting from the definition of surfaces as a network of quadrilaterals. To make it easy, it's important to ensure that the snap mode option is on. This ensures that vertices of each quadrilateral belong to the mesh. Furthermore, to perceive how closely the quadrilateral network approximates the mesh, we can use the color map that can be displayed by selecting the tolerance display mode. It should be noted that the definition of each quadrilateral is completely customizable. Each vertex can be moved as desired along the mesh. It can also be placed on another vertex of the quadrilateral network. If the density of quadrilateral network is not satisfactory, it's possible to increase its resolution by selecting the Increase Resolution option from the window that appears by right-clicking on the quadrilateral network. Sometimes, the mapping created may contain some irregular points, highlighted in red in the network. By clicking on this warning, the software corrects irregularities automatically by inserting additional points. After mapping the upper surface of the suspension, the solid figure is generated by defining its thickness. The freeform function now transforms all information about the network into a solid with defined thickness. In case under consideration, there are a few points at the end of the two arms that have small ripples. This must be corrected by returning to the situation before the definition of the thickness and acting on the mapping of these areas, reconfirming the thickness to the surface at the end. This operation must be repeated until the solid has reached the desired target. At the end, thanks to Boolean subtraction operation, the cylinders previously created are removed. This operation is carried out using the trim function. The excess portion are removed by selecting them. The project is now concluded.